Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwadner and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the great pleasure of meeting with Adam Bandelli and he is the author of a brand new book on relationship intelligence. Adam, there are a lot of terms uh, around intelligence like there's IQ and there's EQ and now you come up with uh, relationship intelligence. Can you define it for us? Relational intelligence is the ability to successfully connect with people and build strong, long lasting relationships. So it's different than some of the other forms of intelligence that might be out there. The most well known one, I think, is emotional intelligence. And that's defined, or we define that as the ability to understand your emotions, the emotions of others, and how to manage emotions effectively. So relational intelligence and emotional intelligence are two totally different constructs. Tell me a little bit about the ability to measure that intelligence. We've developed at our firm, Bandelian Associates, our relational intelligence test, which is a proprietary tool that has uh, participants and senior leaders go through and answer problems that are a relational nature. So you're given scenarios about different situations that may be about developing trust or about influence or about embracing diversity. And the test taker has to find the right response to it. So it's not like a survey question where you have to say most likely, least likely. You're, you're asking, you're answering problems about it. And so this gives you a really good sense to see where people are today. And then we can do training and coaching to help from there. So give me a typical business scenario where a leader that is... Uh anxious to form a new team and uh, make it work at uh, top capacity. Uh, what would they do to put themselves in that position of vulnerability? Yeah, I think there's a couple of different things. So if you look at it from a one-on-one -on -one standpoint, um, every leader wants to get to know their people and start to form an idea of where their strengths are and where their opportunities are. So when leaders are doing some of those initial conversations with their people, starting to ask questions, being curious, figuring out where they fit, um, sharing some of their own stories and some of their own life experiences as a leader and as a person is a way to kind of show that you're not just trying to figure out who your people are, but you're sharing some of who you are as a leader as well. So there's a give and take in relationships. It's not just a lot of times leaders will think that direct reports have to um, kind of follow what they say. Or you have that authoritative type of leadership, really great relationally intelligent leaders. There's a give and take. There's this concept in the book called relational reciprocity. So for relationships to really work, both people play a role in making that happen. How do leaders learn and practice those skills? What's the best, uh, best way uh, to get to your level? One is just awareness. Um, learning about these things, whether it's through picking up the book, which they can in about six weeks, um, whether it's learning about them and different things. But the way that we do it at our firm, we have something called the Relational Intelligence Experience. And this is a two-day immersive training where we take CEOs and C-suite teams off-site to a retreat area where we'll spend two days diving deeply into the five skills of relational intelligence. But why it's immersive is they get to practice the skills right away in the off-site. Um, so I'll give you a perfect example, the, the skill of understanding others. Um, there is, that's the skill, again, to be intentional about getting to know people on a deeper level. The exercise that we'll put people through is called Moments That Matter. And in this exercise, leaders get to ask deep questions about success stories or setbacks and failures that other leaders have experienced. So it's a way to really practice being curious and inquisitive. It's a way to show empathy and compassion towards your colleagues. And it's a really a way to really demonstrate that you understand where they're coming from. So that is the big piece there. We like to do it at the firm is teach people an idea, but have them practice it real time so they can take away some deeper. So what are you saying is that the leader's awareness plays a major role uh, so they need to be able to spot um, the uh, opportunities that uh, people have not explored and encourage them to move towards their goals and dreams. Great leaders um, bring out the best in their people. They see things that their people don't even see about themselves. And they really look to kind of help them grow that, whether it's giving them opportunities to stretch their skills, whether it's exposing them to different ideas or coaches or things like that. So great leaders want to build the people around them. Why is it so challenging, in, uh, even in this day and age where everybody is pro-diversity, uh, to turn uh, thoughts into action? Yeah, so the third skill of relational intelligence is embracing individual differences. And we define this as the ability to acknowledge and accept that everyone is from different backgrounds and experiences. And the way we view it here at our firm is inclusion, diversity, really focuses this idea of diversity of thought. 
Can you bring people who are different, however you want to define that different race, ethnicity, gender, age, sexual orientation, spirituality, religious beliefs, neurodiversity, mental health. Can you bring people who come from different walks of life around the table to share ideas and problem solve and drive innovative ideas and creativity? And so the, the great companies that we work with that do that, they make their employees feel that they're valued, but that their points of view are encouraged to be shared and are included in what they do. What is the, the metaphor behind uh, your uh, display of uh, athletic footwear? Yeah, it's a good, good question. So um, I grew up in the 80s watching Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and uh, Mac Michael Jordan. And so the wall, Michael Jordan was one of my favorite basketball players growing up. Sports and basketball was my entry point into leadership. Um, the question that I spent my whole career focused on is what makes a great leader great? But that was kind of really why. So the shoe wall is kind of an homage. I'm a, a sneakerhead, so I collect shoes. Um, the ones on the wall are collector items. I don't wear those. And the ones behind me um, wear those. Well, thank you, Adam. And I would encourage anybody who wants to um, be more successful personally and professionally to get Adam's book, Relational Intelligence, The Five Essential Skills you need to build life-changing relationships. <music>